so the first two announcements, ladies and gentlemen, the first two of the new era are Suicide Squad knockoffs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Creature Commando has Randall Flagg Sr. in it. Okay. Uh, and it's also got, you know, GI Robot, Dr. Phosphorus. Um, and then the second one was Waller, was Waller's, which is Team Peacemaker, which is his wife's show, was announced before Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, before everybody. His wife's show was the second thing announced. I mean, dude, save it for later. Nerderotic.com. The more I think about it, uh, the worse it gets. <laughs> it was underwhelming. Uh, and there's some stuff that I like for sure in it. Uh, I would say there's some the good, the bad, and the DOA. It's not even ugly. Felt, it's just dead on arrival. I felt exactly the same way. I was it, underwhelmed, you know, just watching the initial presentation which was like this five minute video posted on social media. Not a lot of fanfare there. There was a press event, which resulted in all these stories providing more details. But um, I, I felt the same way as you, Gary. I listened to a lot of other people talk about it. Just the more I think about it, the less I like it. Like it seems, you know, when we knew with Marvel, right? You had all these individual movies, Thor, you know, Captain America, the first Avenger, Iron Man leading to, what we knew would be the inevitable Avengers, the team up, right? Like amazing. I, I don't know where this is going. It seems middling. It seems self-indulgent on James Gunn's part to go to pick sort of like, and look, you know, I, I, I'm not aware of the, what is it? Creature. What is that one? The creature score. I, I can't even remember the name, but it's like, he's picking an obscure A creature commandos. Creature Commandos. Okay. It's an obscure group for me. Okay. Which I'm sure is like, it's just going to be another James Gunn has to show that he's capable of doing a movie that isn't a James Gunn movie. This is like guardians was a lot like suicide squad and creature commandos is probably well, the this, same thing. This is the suicide squad universe. I mean, that's what it is. There's, there's two, there's three suicide squad type shows in this. I, I, this is the thing is like, I think maybe James four. Gunn is very good at taking an obscure character, making them likable, relatable, because we don't have a preconceived notion of what that character is. But we do have preconceived notions about what Superman should be or Batman should be. And the fact that he's rushed headlong into, you know, telling Superman and Batman stories that involve families. Uh, I, I, I I don't know, man. Like we're rushing, we're we're going past like four other Robins, right? Isn't it like what Jason Todd, Dick Grayson? Um, I'm, I always forget one whenever I try to list them all. Dick, well, it's Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, uh, right. and uh, uh, Damien. And now my brain is farting, and I've read all See? the Batman books. God, I hate you. <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm farting on that. One. I hate you. <laughs> Sorry, no. DC dead cut Tim Drake. The God damn it. Drake, uh, senility yes. hits in uh, er, early. Yeah. They passed up a bunch of Robins. The Superman title is I think the most worrisome Superman legacy. So that's, that's usually what you leave behind. Right. Yes. And, and he straight up said, we're going to use these characters to prop up other ones. I'm like, that's what's been going on in Hollywood for five years. That's what Marvel has been doing in phase four. It's called a bait and switch. I mean, and legacy, legacy is what you leave behind when something is over, right? A legacy. And, and th that title is, yeah, the more I thought about it, I, th the more I thought about it, cause I watched the presentation like three times and I thought one of my other thoughts was he clearly did not run this by the marketing department because the pre-prepared statement that James read he says the word fantastic like three times and marvelous and, three times and marvelous, which I think was like a dig at Marvel. Which oh, is there's there's a there is two definitive passive aggressive digs at Marvel. Well, I think I think they earned those, in my opinion. If I was James Gunn, I'd probably feel the same way. But um, I'm just disappointed because I've been I, I've been going to Comic Con since. Since 89 was my first one. It wasn't even what it is, right? But all through the 90s and, and you know, up to the present, never missed a San Diego Comic-Con. There is some, Marvel has perfected the, 
they put on it's like a it's like a rock concert it's huge it's like a concert event when they present and they're just showing you logos and teasers there was nothing there was here's some here's some uh, uh, pictures of comic books you may be familiar with and we're gonna make movies based on those uh, God, I remember when like Zack Snyder just debuted the logo for Batman v Superman. People went nuts. Uh, it was awesome, that logo with the two logos entwined. And there's just something to a showmanship. And I would have thought that like James Gunn would be aware of that, that he should have said nothing and then shown something at San Diego Comic-Con. And I think that he jumped the gun, so to speak. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, fire... Much- I, firing Sorry. Henry Cavill yes. pressured them into doing this. That's bottom line. Like the it, Henry Cavill thing is such a black eye as it stands right now. I don't give a shit what changes later. And I know why they're backing these lame duck movies. But as it stands right now, the DCU has the DCU, sorry, has Ezra Miller and Amber Heard and no Henry Cavill. How do you like look? Okay, Henry Cavill's that difficult. doesn't look good. That's bad optics. As, I mean, they, he implied that Henry Cavill was difficult to deal with. I think that's the entertainment industry and that whole dig about like, you know, we want people that are easy to work with. So the only person missing out of the picture is Henry Cavill implying that is bad you know, optics. It might not be true. I mean, James Gunn yeah. came out and said, hey, Henry Cavill has been dicked around, which he has. He called out his own former management, but that's still your like you don't hear that ever. Uh, from somebody who's currently working about uh, talking shit about um, a, a previous management, although they earned it, they absolutely earned it. Like all, all the you know, Zack Snyder fans or not Zack Snyder fans, I think we can all come together under the umbrella that the Warner Brother man- previous management was garbage, absolute garbage. They were terrible. They fueled all the failures. It was all their fault. You know, you let Zack Snyder finish his vision. Maybe you like it. We we don't know. We don't know because we'll never see it. But uh, bringing in Joss Whedon, it was gobbledygook. Uh, I still think there's a you know probably a decent David Ayer cut out there. But uh, all this is like you can't make the soup. It's all done now. It's all freaking done. And you're on your third reboot. And if it wasn't James Gunn, like this thing would like I doubt it would even get off the ground. It'd be dead. I think the biggest concern we all have is can you make a traditional heroic Superman, the guy who made Brightburn? And I'm like, I don't think so. I I just, prove me wrong, but uh, like James Gunn, nobody deserves the benefit benefit of the doubt in Hollywood. Not not after the last six years. Not not even close. I don't like the lineup. I don't Mm -hmm. think it's leading to anything. I don't think we know where it's going. You know what? Zack Snyder, for whatever you thought about the Snyder Cut, it was leading to a confrontation with Darkseid, which I never in my wildest dreams as a kid thought I would ever see those characters portrayed on screen so well. I mean, the, the one thing you can, look, you can nitpick a lot of Zack Snyder stuff casting. I don't think anybody, maybe with the exception of Ezra Miller, it, it's, it's really hard to criticize Zack Snyder on, on the casting, uh, his casting choices of the Holy Trinity, but doesn't even look like we're leading to a Holy Trinity. We're past that era. Is this where they're starting? They're starting in the middle of the story. It's just, and you pointed out right at the beginning of what you were saying, Gary, like, like this is like the third start for this. Is Are they going to just, are they going to let him finish? What if he has some bombs? Look, you can excuse the Suicide Squad for not performing as well as it did because of the era in which it was released. Most movie theaters still weren't open. And they streamed it. And they streamed it the same day, which is so stupid. Um, that that's just going to kill your business. I saw somebody uh, in uh, the TMNE chat put out, I, I think it was their chat, put up that uh, this is equivalent to Marvel Phase 1 being um, Iron Man, The Eternals, Shang-Chi, Captain Marvel, and Captain America. And I, I could not agree more. That's yeah, that's agree. what it, it's, you're putting a lot of carts before the horse, including the authority, dude. There is... As much cringe as I'd say there's like three things that I would like, hey, I'm down for. Let's go. I'm going to watch them. And then there's three things that are these. uh, What are you talking? They're the most 2022 things you can put out. Uh, Waller, freaking Waller, uh, Paradise, 
Lost, like just the wor- I mean, just most basic bitch title for Themyscira, the all female Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> right, god. and the oh authority my- now by itself, it would be fine. I think a- as an HBO Max series, as an Elseworlds HBO Max series, it would be fine. Incorporate which they did. I know they did, and I didn't like it, and I don't like it. The authority uh, is a Justice League knockoff. That's what they are with a gay Batman and a gay Superman, and you're introducing them before most of the Justice League and the Justice League in your phase one, in your chapter one. That makes no sense. None. So I'm not too sure about storytelling. And, of course, we can talk about a couple of people who are in that writer's room that he got together. I mean, Drew Goddard's there. Great. That's fantastic. He's behind Daredevil season one, That, and I know he's close to James Gunn, and he's legit. Tom King and the writer from The Watchmen? Major red flags. Every single red flag should go up that Tom King is involved, or at least they're basing uh, uh, one of the major films on his story. And the the fact that, like, James Gunn thinks it's good is mind-boggling because Tom King is everything wrong with modern Marvel comics, like personified in one single human being. Again, there are some projects that sound like, hey, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, but it's surrounded by muckety muck. And gobbledygook. In the meantime, you have some lame duck movies. You have a lot of time. And you have more time for Marvel to poison the well with their superhero fatigue. Which is not James Gunn's fault. It's not. Uh, But the superhero fatigue that is most definitely setting in is Marvel's fault for spamming content. There would have been a time. Like I know DC fans are, and I am too. I think they, they should have done the Elseworld thing fucking years ago, and DC has major advantages over Marvel. They can do a hard R Swamp Thing. Fuck yeah, let's go. And they can do a rated R Batman and a PG Batman, all at the same time. And they can call it Elseworlds, and you could have trained the general audience to know what an Elseworlds title is. But I think that that ship has sailed, because it's so confusing now. Again, the comma fans are like, what? It's easy. It's not for for the general audience. It's just not. It's, It's gonna be majorly confusing. So, uh, James Gunn is behind the eight ball, and I don't think he helped himself with this announcement at all. NerdRotic.com. Please subscribe. Hey, if you like what we do here at NerdRotic Daily, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you could do that with your favorite YouTuber as well, I'm sure they would appreciate it as much as I do.